Jesus. A wonderful evening, beloveds. Um, let us kindly walk in and invite as many as possible to come and hear the word of the Lord for themselves. Invite as many as possible, as fast as possible, to come and hear the word of the Lord for themselves. It's a very important time that we're in. We are in a time of manifestation and as such we need to know exactly what to do, when to do it and how to do it and to understand what God is doing. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a very interesting time to say the least. So I don't want to start giving context in terms of what the Lord has been giving me understanding of until as many of you as possible are online so that we can start together. Hallelujah. Amen. We had such a beautiful, beautiful end of April. We had our Passover dinner in Habarun, Habani, sorry. And the Lord had a beautiful, beautiful message. Very timely message as well for us to understand the times and seasons that we're in. And we finished it off with starting the new, much anticipated month of May 2023 with baptism. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It was such a blessing. I believe we had more than 200 individuals get baptized. Uh, my body was not in agreement with the kind of excitement that was in my spirit. But nonetheless, we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And right after we finished with baptism, God gave me a word concerning this month. And he has been giving me more and more context on a daily basis concerning the word that he has declared over this month of May. It's such an eventful month. Hallelujah. Amen. In both kingdoms of light and darkness. Those of you that have heard the word concerning the moon that I have given before, where the Lord had given me understanding in 2020, that once you see the moon getting brighter and brighter, understand that now all are being aligned with their destiny. Amen. All are being aligned with the choice of camp. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We are about to see true colors more and more. And that's a good thing, but it's also a very disturbing thing at the same time when we talk about true colors from the dark kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why you cannot afford to be a casual Christian in this time. You simply cannot afford it. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to have a relationship with Holy Spirit. You have to be able to hear his warnings, his counsel, his direction, his instruction on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Amen. Not once in a while, not from your servant of God, once in every one day of the week. This is something that has to be a lifestyle. You have to hear God on a daily basis for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the devil doesn't go on vacation. Amen. The devil doesn't only show up on Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil shows up every single day to test you, to see if he can tempt you, to see if he can get you to move astray from the path that God has for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is very, very important now more than ever before to be able to hear God for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to give you two more minutes to log in. So do share with someone that we are live. I'm going to just stop right here from sharing anything beyond what I've already shared until all of you are online and we can all start 
together. Hallelujah. Amen. Two more minutes and then we begin. You can share with friends, you can share with enemies, you can share with colleagues, you can share with absolutely anyone the Spirit of God puts in your mind to share with, to come and hear this word. Hallelujah. Amen. At the same time, we're seeing a lot of confirmations that are taking place. Some of them, uh, we are not sharing them online. We have given you the prophetic word, so when the word comes to pass, you can see it for yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. So some of those things we have not been sharing on a daily basis because if we were, we cannot, we simply cannot keep up with all the confirmations. And some of it is progressive, like what is happening with the banks. So it's not something that we can repeat over and over again. What we can do though, is to share with you what God is saying on how you are to transition. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to have to excuse me. There is so much presence and I have no idea how the Spirit of God is going to express himself today. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a shift in the spirit realm. There is a shift in this month as we enter the second half of 2023. It's going to be very, very eventful. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to make sure that we are anchored in Christ Jesus. We have to make sure that we are anchored. Some of the things that we concern ourselves with in this season is of great concern to me and I believe even more so to God because majority have not yet been able to discern the times and the seasons. We still think it's business as usual. We still do life as we would on any other day. We still continue with our plans. We still continue with our aspirations, our ambitions, with failure to understand the times and the demand of the time that we are in. Hallelujah. Amen. And I can only pray for you that you'll be able to see these signs and be able to make that transition. Even for those of you that are working in banks right now, especially the banks that we have spoken of prophetically, that the Lord has mentioned prophetically, my brother, my sister, seek the Lord to know what is next for you. Seek the Lord to know how to transition. Those of you that God will be transitioning and those of you that God will want to use inside the banks still during the storm, Seek him even the more to understand how you are to navigate the system of this world as God prepares to use you to bring in his own system. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to pray for capacity on how you are going to confront the system of darkness because now nothing is hidden anymore. We have to make a choice whom we are to serve. Whether you are a health worker, whether you are working for the government, whether you are working for a private entity, you have to make a choice in this season whom you will serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whether you are a teacher, you have to make a choice whom will you serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Witchcraft is being perpetrated in schools now more than ever before. Literally, we are seeing those that call themselves teachers coming in classrooms of five-year-olds, six-year-olds, six year wearing demonic costumes and making the children wear demonic costumes, teaching them witchcraft spells. These are the things that we're seeing happening in this very time that we're in. And yet, it is still business as usual for my fellow brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. It is time to wake up. You owe it to your children. You owe it to yourself. So that when you stand before your father, you are able to give a good account for what you did with your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not all lost. It is never too late. As long as you are listening to me right now, as long as you still have breath, it is never too late to turn around and to start doing the right thing and to allow the Spirit of God to take you over and cause you to stand for righteousness and to stand for that which is good and acceptable before the one who made it all. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I do trust that those that have not yet been able to uh, grace us with their presence, they will find us uh, well on our way to giving you the fullness of God's word for you today. There's a lot I need to touch on today uh, because this month is going to be very hectic for me. I'm not sure how often I'll be able to come on live because we are preparing for a very important service on the 28th. Hallelujah. Which brings me to my point concerning the month of May. Right after we finish baptism on the 1st of May, the Lord said, this is my month to rain down fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, this is the month of fire. Somebody say, this is the month of fire. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Give away. This is the month of fire. It's the month of what? Fire. 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 And not just any fire. This is the month of holy fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We have seen enough dark fire, profane fire. So much profane fire. Hallelujah. Amen. We have seen enough of it. Even in the house of the Lord. We have seen enough profane fire. Fire. So the Lord is saying, they've been, we've been in a season where he's been giving you his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Where he's been giving you understanding of what is happening in the world that you live in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We've been in a season where God has been uncovering your eyes to cause you to see without the scales that the enemy had put on your eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The scales of deception. The scales that made you see God in a certain way that is not true. The scales that made you see life in a certain way that is not true. Amen. The scales that made you see yourself and who you are in a certain way that is not true. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And some still have those scales on and the enemy continues to put even more scales on top of the scales they already have. Amen. And the Lord says to bring balance to the extreme that is happening in the kingdom of darkness, we need some extreme in the kingdom of light. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is looking for men and women with sharp sight. Amen. Men and women who are ready to 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 host and to use the eyes of the spirit, which are the eyes of an eagle. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Men and women who are able to see the fullness of God's vision for their generation and generations to come. And not only see the vision, but be able to run with the vision. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When God told me that it is a month of fire, this was on the 1st of May. The night before, during service, he instructed me to give a prophetic word that he has given me before, but he had given it to us privately to say we should stop drinking oros. Hallelujah. Amen. And I found it such a strange time for him to instruct me to tell his people that word. So, in obedience to him, I rose up and I went back uh, to the podium and I told them, this is what the Lord is saying. This season do not drink this orange concentrated drink. Hallelujah. Amen. So on the first when the Lord said it is a month of fire and then he just gave me the color orange. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the color of fire. He gave me the color orange to say this is the color of this month. Because I am raining down my fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Now what does the fire of God come to do? We need to understand that. We don't just get excited that, oh, we, the fire of God is raining down. And mind you, we serve a God of order. So one of the things that you confess or that you receive during baptism of water 
is baptism in holy fire. Amen. You receive the gift of Holy Spirit and baptism in holy fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why then the Lord, it only made sense that he said, now we have entered a time and a process or a phase in his redemptive plan for you where now you are being baptized with holy fire. Because that is what was what? That is what was released upon you as you were getting baptized. Now you get to go through the process of receiving this holy fire. In heaven, it has already been released. In heaven, you have already received it. But there is a process because you are living in a world that is governed by time. So in the natural, there is a process that you go through in order for you to receive this fire. Amen. And what the fire does. Because everything that God releases is for purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to understand why we are getting baptized with holy fire. Amen. What does holy fire come to do in our lives? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And just a few days ago, was it two days ago, he said, I'm very intentional about this season. That's the first thing that he said. The second thing that he said, he said, the minute you entered this month that I have long spoken of, he said a collision took place between Chrono and Kairos. He said there is an explosion that has taken place in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, this is the kind of acceleration you are going to see in the season. Once I speak my word that will come from your mouth in the season, the minute the word goes forth, you are going to see the beginning of the manifestation of the same word the very time the word is given. Amen. Because Chrono and Kairos have now what become one. Hallelujah. Amen. We are now aligned with heaven. Good or bad, we are now aligned with heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is what the moon is also pointing to. Amen. And those in the dark kingdom also understand the season that we are in. They also understand what it means. And I'm sorry to use this. And I don't use it to be disrespectful or anything. And I pray that it will also help that family to understand how these things work. Hallelujah. Amen. We are praying that the soul of Canaan is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God did mention him right before the shooting happened. We are praying that his soul made it into heaven. But this is what the Lord showed me. A few days ago, I saw a picture of his daughter. The name is Cairo. And I saw underneath the photo that she, she just recently turned eight years old. Hallelujah. Amen. And if I'm not mistaken, it's in this very month of May. And when I saw that, the Spirit of the Lord said, this is prophetically pointing to the time that we are in and what I just spoke to you concerning this season. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the number eight represents new beginnings. Yeah. And when we talk about Cairo, when we talk about divine time, for lack of a better word to define it. When we talk about divine time, we are talking about divinity interrupting that which has been in motion chronologically. Hallelujah. Amen. And when divinity interrupts that which is happening now, that means whatever is supposed to be written of you is what is going to be coming into fruition in your life. In other words, things begin to be accelerated to help you to catch up to where your life is supposed to be at this point in time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why it is such a very, very important time that we're in. God is giving some of you a second chance that you blew before. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those of you that have had this moment before, because it doesn't come frequently. It comes once in a generation. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So we are in such an opportune time. You have no idea what time we are in. And God is saying, I am leveling the playing field for all of you in this season. By reason of this shaking, I am leveling the playing field. None of you is going to have an excuse for not coming into your true destiny in this time that we are in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he has taken you in, enrolled you into the process that is ushering you into that which the Father has written of you. He is ushering you into his promises for your life. That which he has written concerning you, his inheritance for you, that is what he's ushering you into through the process that he's taking you through. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this month that we are in, God is saying, I'm releasing my fire. Amen. I have indeed released my fire. Amen. And he said, you are going to release this fire officially on the 28th of May. That is the last Sunday. Remember, we are always meeting on the last Sunday of every month. And it so happens, it's not even a coincidence because he did say, now Chrono and Cairo have what? Have collided. Amen. He said, look up the 28th of May and see what day it is. And I looked it up and guess what? It is the day of Pentecost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is precisely the day of fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what did God instruct them to do before the coming down, the raining down of fire? This fire, beloved, doesn't come from a human being. Amen. It's not going to be coming from me. This is that which heaven is releasing by being given the authority to do so by the Father himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Father is the one that is what? He's in control of the times. He is the one that determines what is to be released when. Amen. Even the Son said so, that times and the authority of when things are released lie with the Father. I don't even know when I'm coming back to you. One thing I do know is I am coming back, but I don't know when I'm coming back. The father had given Abraham a word to say, I will give you a seed. I have called you to be the father of nations. I've called your wife to be the mother of nations. I will give you my seed to birth this nation I'm talking about. Amen. But the one thing he didn't tell him is there is an appointed time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So oftentimes we move into error and we make mistake after mistake. We blunder a lot. Why? Because we fail to understand that even when God has given you a word for your life, the reason why you need Holy Spirit is because Holy Spirit only instructs you to do what you ought to do in that time, which is taking you towards the manifestation of the promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But with your own human understanding, receiving a prophetic word or receiving the word of promise is as good as receiving the promise itself. Hallelujah. Amen. But we serve a God of order and timing. Amen. So when you move by the leading of Holy Spirit, you are always on time. Amen. When you move by the Holy Spirit, you don't squander God's time that he has given you. Amen. Because with everything that you are doing, you are doing exactly that which has been written of you in heaven. And therefore, your time is accounted for. Amen. Jesus lived that kind of life. He would leave the disciples after ministration, go and inquire of the Spirit of God, that which is written of him for the next day, that he may be able to walk in the perfect will of the Father on a daily basis. Amen. Failure to know the timing of the Father for everything and every step in your life Better yet, failure to know and understand that there are steps to be taken 
on your way to that which you are looking forward to, to the manifestation of that which you are looking forward to, that God has promised you. Failure to understand that there are steps. It brings what? It brings frustration. It brings temptation to then follow in the counterfeit plans of the enemy that are derailing you away from the will of God for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are a man or a woman of the spirit, you are able to know what time it is in your life. You are not shaken. You are not moved by what is happening in other people's lanes. Amen. You are moving according to that which God has entrusted you and that which the spirit of truth is revealing to you and is speaking to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you don't do that and you just move by what you are seeing other people doing, you are in actual fact wasting time. You are in actual fact moving backwards. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you are going to have to relive and you are going to have to redo and retake the courses or the steps that you missed while you were still looking at what other people are doing and trying to follow in the ways of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God has appointed times Amen. for everything. If you want to see the power of God in your life, you want to see your life and everything that you commit yourself to becoming a success. I'm not saying that you will not face uh, difficulties and you will not face challenges. But if you want to see everything you are doing in your life being built on a solid foundation such that it will never have to be torn down again, you have to follow the leading of the Spirit. Amen. For the Spirit is the one that receives that which the Father has released in its appointed time. Amen. In other words, the first one to know what has been released by the Father is the Spirit. Amen. Because the Spirit is the messenger that then comes to give you word and understanding of what the Father has laid in his heart to do in that time. Mm -hmm. The same Spirit comes to empower you to do that which the Father has authorized. Mm -hmm. In other words, for you to be able to do everything God is calling you to do, you have to be within God's time frame. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. As long as you are in God's time frame, God will always make a way for what he wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are in that season where the Father is releasing one more time the rushing mighty wind Amen. of the Spirit Amen. that comes to divide the wheat from the chaff. Amen. That also comes to usher in tongues of fire. Amen. These tongues of fire will be resting on individuals that are tarrying Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, we are in a season. Don't wait for the 28th. You'll be too late. Mm -hmm. Don't say, I'm waiting for the day of fire. Make sure that you position yourself yes. in the presence of the Father, mm -hmm. in the presence of God through prayer. Mm -hmm. For this time of fire, that is specifically for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The fire comes to ignite Amen. that which you carry. The Bible lets us know that on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came like a rushing mighty wind, once it descended on them, it divided itself into tongues of fire. Amen. That then rested upon every single one of them, carrying a different tongue, carrying a different language. Amen. What was the Spirit doing? The Spirit was identifying every individual according to their assignment and their assignment's location. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The town itself was letting them know where they are being sent to. Amen. Remember Jesus had told them, once the spirit has come upon you, mm -hmm. I will commission you mm -hmm. to go and preach the word with authority Amen. to Jerusalem, to, to Judea, and to Samaria and the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. 
The same spirit once it came, it did exactly that. Amen. The spirit came and the tongues of fire carried upon themselves the languages of the places they were being sent to. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, if you were in that meeting and you received Sejuana, you were being sent to Botswana. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you were in that meeting and you received Zulu tongues, God was sending you to the Zulu people. Amen. If you received Shona tongues, God was sending you to the, the Shona people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in this time, God is saying, this fire mm -hmm. that I am bringing down, yes. because the fire is the spirit coming in a different way. Amen. The first phase that we are coming out of, where I've been giving you prophetic words for nation after nation after nation after nation, it was the spirit coming to prophesy. Hallelujah. Amen. It was wearing the hat of prophecy Amen. to speak the heart of the Father concerning the nations. Amen. Now the same spirit is coming back with a different mission. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The same spirit yes. has prophesied yes. that there is disorder. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The same spirit has prophesied that there is misalignment. In this world. Please. The same spirit has prophesied. That people are not where they are supposed to be. Yes. People are not doing what they are supposed to be doing. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore destinies have been frustrated for a very long time. Yes. Let me tell you something. Money does not mean that you have fulfilled destiny. Amen. You can still have money and be frustrated. Your spirit be frustrated because you are not moving according to that which you've been destined to do. Amen. So because we have been moving by the spirit of deception, the enemy had now diverted our attention Away from the thing that we hunger after. And that is destiny. Amen. And made us believe that we are hungry for money. Amen. And that we are hungry for notoriety. Amen. And that we are hungry for material gain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The very things that were supposed to help, they are help us to destiny. Amen. They are not destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So when our eyes were fixated on that, the devil didn't have to do anything else. Amen. Because it means if all you are looking for is fame and money and material gain and soft life, guess what? You are a perfect candidate for the devil to use you for his own works. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are a perfect candidate for the spirit of strife. You are the perfect candidate for the spirit of corruption, mm -hmm. for the spirit of bribe, mm -hmm. for the spirit of adultery, for the spirit of lust, for the spirit of seduction. All of these things, you become a perfect candidate because it means you will stop at nothing to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you are fixated on your God-given destiny, this is what your God-given destiny does. It restrains you from sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because if it is your top priority, you are not willing to allow anything to compromise it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So which means even when temptation comes to steal, you can't steal because you know it will compromise the one thing that you want the most. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If temptation comes to bribe, you cannot do it. Why? Because destiny becomes your restrainer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord says, now I, the Lord, the time has come because we are in a time of fulfillment. Amen. According to your choice in the season, according to whatever camp you have chosen, I am coming to empower you Amen. to fulfill that which is in your heart. Amen. That is a very sobering word. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It's a very sobering word. Amen. The Lord says, one, I'm coming to fulfill my word. Amen. Because my word will never return to me void. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are going to help in the fulfillment of my word. Amen. Whether as a type of Jesus or as a type of Judas. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. One way or another, there is going to be fulfillment Amen. of word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, my spirit comes as fire to bring order. That means anything that is misaligned in the body of Christ, if the neck decided is going to be the leg, and the leg decided to take the place of the arm, and the feet decided to be the hands, the spirit comes to rearrange the members of the body Amen. according to what they are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have been in dysfunction for the longest time, hallelujah, Amen. when order finally comes, Amen. if all you've ever known is dysfunction, when order comes, you are going to mistake order for dysfunction. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Hallelujah. When you are used to disorder, all you have ever known is disorder. Because disorder can look like order. Hallelujah. Disorder can look like what? Can look like order. But God says, in a season where I'm bringing my order, my order, not man's order, Hallelujah. Amen. My order is God, not men's order. By the way, there's lot shedding, so we had been using the laptop to give us light. But now the laptop is off, so that is why you are seeing uh, the camera the way that it is. But we're going to continue nonetheless. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you are used to disorder, when God finally brings his order, it, it's going to look like what? It's going to look like disorder. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord says, nonetheless, I am bringing it. Amen. And I'm going to what? Bring everyone into their true function. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So now I'm going to read for you exactly what he said. And I'm going to read for you the verse that he gave that is precisely for this very word of the fire of God that is coming in the season. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to first start very quickly with the prophetic word. And then from the prophetic word, I'm going to move on to this very word to give you the full context of what the Lord said to me. On the 15th, it's been a while since we gave the word. On the 15th of April, this is what the Spirit of the Lord said. He said, watch, 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 watch. Watch what I shall do as I take back my land. This word is for the nation of South Africa. I will tell you when I'm done with the word for South Africa. And just this morning, the Lord said to me, he said, I am calling you in this time to be a messenger to Azania. And just a few, uh, was it a few weeks ago, we were in South Africa. We met with uh, this precious, precious woman of God. She's an apostle of the Lord in South Africa. And she shared with us the fact that uh, she received a prophetic word from one of the servants of God who told her that the Lord uh, told them that the real name for South Africa is Azania. And I found it so profound because God has been saying Azania a lot for years. 
we've been in prayer and the Lord has just been saying Azania a lot. And then on our way back, we saw in Pretoria, they had sprayed the name Azania to say this is, uh, South Africa is Azania, something of that nature. So God was just confirming it over and over again. So this morning he said to me, messenger of Azania. And I remembered that he gave me a very lengthy word concerning South Africa just a few weeks ago. And there has been word that he's given in the past concerning South Africa. And I remember one of the words that he gave. He said, South Africa, I shall humble first, but it shall experience my favor. And there's so many other words that he has given me concerning South Africa that some of them I cannot share now. But this is what the Lord said concerning South Africa recently. He said, watch what I shall do to take back my land. Watch what I shall do with my land. My land shall give me glory. It shall bring me glory. Glory, my land. My land is no longer divided. My land is no longer, my land no longer serves altars of darkness. My land shall bow. Watch for the sign. As you see it, know I have dealt with poverty. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said, man-made poverty, watch. Watch me work in this season. As you see tombs, certain ones open in this nation. Know that I am at work. Know that my work has begun. I have done it before and I will do it again. South Africa. Then he said, Bella Bella. And then he said, Anigo. Anigo means favored or gracious. I come for you. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a town in the Limpopo province. And then he said, watch what I shall do out of the tombs. Watch what shall come out of the tombs. Sorry. And then he said, watch for when I walk my land, they shall call it an earthquake. They shall call it an earthquake. Watch as I raise men of law, men who know me, men who know my true law. Watch as I bring them forth to the forefront, fearless. My authority shall be in their mouth. They shall speak and it shall be, and it shall come to pass. When I read this part, I remember what the Lord said even concerning our nation to say that he's going to raise a righteous judge. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said, Venda, come out of darkness, deep darkness, come out, come out, come out. Your colors assume their true meaning. Venda, the rightful air, the rightful air will bring light. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said, Mosheries, Mosheries, we're still in South Africa. He said, Mosheries, I expose the inner workings of Mosheries in this nation. Shocking things come forth. It marks the end. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, as they, the, the, the truth is exposed concerning what is happening in mosheries, then it is marking the end of whatever operation is taking place there. On the 17th, this is what the Lord spoke. We, were st we are still in South Africa. He said, recover all, all birthright. My people receive your birthright. Now, this word is Packed. Unfortunately, I'm not yet given permission to give the fullness of it, but it's packed. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so packed. He said, recover all. Recover your birthright. Hallelujah. Amen. My people receive your birthright. And then he said, shocking connections. Soon I expose the dark side. The dark side. I expose the dark side. A shift. A shift. The shift comes. And then he said, Marikana, Marikana, Marikana. The blood of my people cries out from this ground. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a ground that we were at that the Lord said his, his people's blood cries from that place. And he said, they shall recover their birthright. Amen. Hallelujah. Just give me a minute. I want to see if this is something I'm permitted to share with you or not. And 
And then the Spirit of the Lord also revealed that the land of South Africa has been sold. And the truth concerning who sold the land shall come forth as God restores the land. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Back to its people. But this is the word I want to give to my fellow brothers and sisters in South Africa. The Lord, as he brings this restoration, is saying, have my heart in mind. Mm -hmm. God has a plan, a partnership plan for South Africans and the Boers. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I know that there is a very, very sour past, a very, very sour, traumatic past concerning these two. But the Lord is saying the enemy did that on purpose because he knows that there is a divine partnership that will determine the fullness of the coming forth of the destiny of Azania. And failure to partner according to the leading of the Lord, failure to forgive and failure to repent because they are both, they, what needs to be done from both ends. Some need to forgive and some need to repent. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And part of repentance is giving back what is not yours. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And part of forgiveness is willingness to share, fail that which you both have and the and ability to come together and appreciate the different strengths that you both have. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's not even uh, debatable. The land belongs to the South African people. But we also have to understand that God brought in the Boers because he knew he has a partnership plan for them, which means even within that land that belongs to South Africans, God has a portion that he wants to give or that he has predestined for his other children being Boers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And by reason of the gift they carry concerning farming, it's a given. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We cannot do it. Listen, a gift is not something you can work at. It's not even something you can be proud of because you didn't earn it. It's given to you. It's something that just you don't even know how you know what you know, but you just know. Hallelujah. Amen. And when it comes to farming, bulls know that thing. Amen. It's that thing. They know how to do farming. And at the same time, we have the land, the potent land. He calls it potent, and it, it is so potent. Hallelujah. Amen. We've seen it. Some of you have been to Transvaal, you've been to uh, the farms in Cape Town, Stellenbosch, and all these places, even in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Southern Africa is potent. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's good for farming. But at the same time, we don't have all the skills Amen. in order to harness the fullness of the potential of what our land and what it can yield. Hallelujah. Amen. And so God in his wisdom has put some of the strength that is needed in another race, as we call them. Amen. And then he has made sure that the other race equally has something valuable that is also needed. Now, when God is not in the picture, what happens is war erupts. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Strife, competition, all sorts of things. In order to what? To hijack one another of what we have or what we have been given by God that is supposed to give us an added advantage at life in order for us to be able to get the things that we don't have by reason of the things that we do have. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to pray for the nation of South Africa because like the Lord said, he's expanding his borders. When I talk about South Africa, I don't want you to isolate yourself from this. If you are listening and you are in Botswana or you are in Zimbabwe or you are in Zambia or wherever the case may be. Because the Lord has spoken about the fact that he is coming to rearrange borderlines. Hallelujah. Amen. And not just borderlines. Some of you are going to be moved from where you are to these other places. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because remember, the Spirit comes to give you the time Amen. of where you are being sent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And whether you like it or not, no matter how proud you are of where you come from, 
but you don't live where you come from. You don't eat from where you come from or where you think you come from. You eat from where you are and you live and your shelter is where you are. You are making a living where you are. So if God is going to be sending you out to whatever nation, whatever he's saying concerning that nation affects you, Amen. that's why you should always pray for all nations as God gives word. Because you don't know whether you are praying for where you are going or where your children will eventually go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how God gets us to look beyond ourselves. Amen. Because sometimes when you think you are being selfless, which is what we're supposed to be. Amen. Taking time to just pray for things that don't even affect you or so you think. Mm -hmm. You being selfless is actually you being self-conscious. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because in that, you will later realize as God unfolds the mysteries of your journey. The goodness of the Lord and the wisdom of the Lord. Amen. And you'll get to understand your good heart has proven itself to be a very good investment Amen. for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to continue with the word. And then the Lord said, membrane. Then he said, nira. Nira means field. And then he said, remember this groundbreaking discovery. When he said this, I was under a maple tree. He said, groundbreaking discovery of the use of the membrane of the maple leaf. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, groundbreaking discovery of the use of the membrane of the maple leaf. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said, syndicate. And then he said, dynamite. And then he gave a word. Uh, I'll wait on him on whether to share this word or not with the public. And then on the 18th, he said, evaluation of my word. Evaluation of my word. And then he said, Samara. Samara means guardian or protected by God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said, doors are opening everywhere. Amen. Doors are opening everywhere. Then he said, pleasant surprises. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pleasant surprises. This one, I felt it in my spirit when he said it. Hallelujah. Amen. As much as there's going to be, there are going to be so many situations and so many things happening in this, this very time to discourage and to do all sorts of things. The Lord says, if you keep your eyes on me, your story will be different. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how you will be shining forth with my light. And many will ask themselves, how are you doing it? How is it that your life is different from what is unfolding with the rest of the world? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he said colors. And then he said, I, Isle of Glory. This is going to be in his house. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, Signs, Isle of Glory. Then he said, Mary, Mary, Mary. I'm feeling the presence of the Lord so strongly right now. And then he said, Saul, Saul, your time is up. Your time is up. We're all familiar with King Saul, so you can understand what uh, the Lord is communicating to the souls of the hour. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he said, Leon. Leon means lion. And then he said, you will get to understand also why he's talking about a lion all of a sudden so much in this season and fire. And then he said, Orlando Syndicate. Syndicate is a group of people or companies that join together in order to share the cost of a business operation. We're in a season where God is doing a mighty work through his people as a team. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever God is doing for us in this time, he is causing us to come together and get it done together. Amen. That is why he keeps on saying syndicate a lot. He wants to point us to the teaming up he's been talking about all this time. Listen, no man is an island. Amen. You are going to know in this season that you need one another. And this is how you are also going to be appreciating the different gifts that we all carry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you have something that I need that I don't have. It's the same thing I've been saying about South Africans and the Boers. You have something that I desperately need that I don't have. And I have something that you desperately need that you don't have. 
That is why he said there's going to be butter exchange in the season. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's also a buttering of what? Of gifts. Hallelujah. Amen. Where I serve you with my gift and you serve me with your gift, whatever it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Both services and products. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to be serving one another for a common goal. Amen. In order for us to be victorious in this time. Amen. The enemy as he comes, he better not find you isolated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Continues to say praise, praise, praise him. Praise the Son of Man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said, Dokas Malesu. Dokas. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he went on to say, classified documents, unclassified. And then he went on to say, May, month of victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he went on to say, May, month of pay. Pay in Hebrew is a Hebrew word which in English means open mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said May is also a month of what? What does the Spirit do? Remember when what I said concerning the time of Pentecost. Yes. When the Spirit came upon them in tongues of fire, what was it coming as? It was coming as a mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A mouthpiece to what? To speak, to be a witness of the word of God to whatever people that need to hear the good news. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is a month where your mouth is going to be opened Amen. to speak the things of God Amen. to whomever you are being called to speak them to. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whether you are going to be speaking the policies of God in a meeting, Amen. whether you are going to be speaking the law of God in parliament, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. Whether you are going to be speaking the Word of God in schools, Amen. the true understanding of education, Amen. whether you are going to be speaking and giving people prescription of real medicine, Amen. speaking the mouth and the heart of God, the spirit will take hold of your mouth Come on. going forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Because it is a time of manifestation. Hallelujah. Amen. Basi mulutze. Kwa ha satan. Basi mulutze. reset is coming. They are unfolding the reset. Amen. You need to wake up. Amen. And also unfold the reset of your kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They have their spokesperson people everywhere. They have those that are representing them everywhere in every single field. They have, re they have representatives. But in the kingdom of light, for the longest time, by reason of fear, we have not been able to open our mouth mm -hmm. and to speak and to declare the word with fire and with confidence, with holding nothing back and with no fear for man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you don't have the ability yourself in and within yourself, you don't have the ability. That is why even when you knew and you know what you know now, you still cannot speak for God. When you can clearly see that the people that you are around are in complete darkness. Amen. Wow, there is fear. But when fire comes upon you, orata osarat, character changes. Amen. Some of you, you are going to be in the house of the Lord. Wow. The fire will just come upon you and you will just jump off your chair. People know you to be very much collected and all sorts of things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time. Amen. For power. Amen. For the manifestation of the word of the Lord. Amen. It's time for action. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for good works. Amen. That is what the Spirit comes to empower you to do. Amen. So when you speak, that which the Spirit is inspiring you to speak, you need to understand 
The same spirit that causes you to speak. The minute you speak, it sends you forth. Amen. To follow the word. Amen. That you've spoken. Amen. Because God is not a God that just stops with word. The word must come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you are a man and a woman of faith, when the, the spirit of God speaks through you, you will follow, your works will follow the word. Amen. That has been declared. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. By the way, we are also fasting on our way to the 28th. Hallelujah. Amen. You are removing all toxins, all gossip, all sorts of things, jealousy, bitterness, offense, every toxic thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Before the day of baptism by fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Including all the toxins you've been putting in your body, physically, in the form of food. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And medication that is not medication. God is going to be purging you, getting your body or your temple ready for that which he's doing in this season. Amen. He continues to say, no, this is a vision that I had. And then I saw Pentagon weaponizing corn. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I saw Pentagon weaponizing corn. I don't know how, but that's what I saw. And I don't know whether it's going to only, I believe it's only going to be affecting America, but I stand to be corrected. You need to pray about it for yourself and also hear the Lord for yourself concerning this word. Hallelujah. Amen. And the, the spirit of the Lord said walnuts. He just said walnuts. So usually when he points out food, he's just adding it to our diet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then on the 23rd, he said, Vladimir. Vladimir, peaceful. Vladimir means peaceful ruler. So we had been given a word by the Lord to pray for Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, so that he will not give in to the temptation of the enemy for him to participate in World War III. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that would be very devastating for the world. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to pray for his name, for him to live up to his name mm -hmm. as a peaceful ruler. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we need to make it a point that we start calling him with this name. It's not out of disrespect. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The same way that we respect our forefathers, Abraham, but that's his first name, is it not? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mobile. What are you saying? No. But it was not disrespectful, was it? Mm -hmm. So when you speak someone's name, especially if it's prophetic, then the person has no choice but to become what the name says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. However way you, you say it, Hallelujah. Vladimir. Holy Spirit, on the same day, he said, careful study of my goodness. Amen. And then he said, names, names, names come down. Names come down. Make way for my name. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, my name takes center stage. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then on the 25th, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. On the 25th, he said, oil, oil. Oil for the latter days. I received this oil this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I received it and I shall share it with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
And then he said, for these are the latter days. Hallelujah. Amen. Then he said, Sam Smith. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I have warned you. Now I come for you. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know whether prayers can still be made for him, but that is the word of the Lord concerning him. And then the Lord said, in, on the 26th, he said, Rea, Rea, Rea Kopi, come, come, come. And then he said, Kapaya. Those of you that know the meaning of Kapaya is wealth, and that is the season we are in. He said, Ziklag. Ziklag is, it means measure, press down. There's also a place in the Bible called Ziklag, right? Yes. yes. And then he said, butter, butter exchange, butter. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Then he said, they that worship, after he said butter, they worship in what? In spirit and in truth. And part of worship is obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. On the 29th, he said, dim the lights in the enemy's camp. Amen. Dim. How do we dim the lights in the enemy's camp? We let our light shine. Amen. It's that simple. Amen. Because the light that Satan carries is not true light. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why fake light looks like real light is when real light is absent. Mm -hmm. So people have nothing to compare to. Mm -hmm. They know that they're supposed to be light. So the only thing that looks closest to light, they will gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. Until light decides to take center stage. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord is saying, in other words, when he says, dim the lights in the enemy's camp, he's saying, shine. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And then he said, sunak, 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 arrow, arrow. So sunak is the current prime minister, I believe, of... Uh, the United Kingdom, the Lord said, Abu, Abu, twice. Uh, in terms of his current assignment, I'm not a fan, but he's, he's a man, he's a fellow man, and we wish him nothing but to make it to heaven. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So let us pray for the man that whatever his, uh, the enemy is planning against his life, does not prosper. But at the same time, let's pray for him to leave office. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I said, I have nothing but love. But uh, love doesn't mean that we shy away from truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, yes. So he's not God's chosen to be prime minister in the United Kingdom. And we are not going to... Listen, the time to apologize for truth is not now. Amen. It's crunch time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We must speak things as they are. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Otherwise, we are going to be in heaven. Amen. And we no longer have the opportunity we had to speak. Amen the truth Amen. that the people may make informed decisions Amen. and pray accordingly Amen. hallelujah Amen. some of you may be like why would you say that out loud some people are genuinely genuinely don't know the will of god and they're busy praying amiss Amen. simply because we are not speaking forth the truth as it is yes. hallelujah Amen. we must speak yes. Amen. hallelujah yes. the lord said efficacy this is on the 3rd of May. He said efficacy. Then he said cerebral. cerebral. This word is always, always gets me. Cerebral. That, that part of the brain. Is it, what is it responsible for? Does anybody know? Huh? Is it responsible for memory? He said efficacy. This one is a bit of a puzzle. We, we have to find, we'll find out with time uh, what the Lord is saying. Then he said brokers. Then he said efficacy again. And then he said efficacy again. So there is a connection between the word efficacy and that part of the brain and brokers. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he said El, El Karina. I believe Karina means light, if I'm not mistaken. If it's not light, then it's favor. It's one of those two. Karina is another form of Catherine. Yes. So whatever meaning uh, Catherine, the name Catherine has, that's the 
meaning of Karina as well, I believe. And then it gets a little bit serious. The Lord then said, Hiroshima, hallelujah. Amen. Before I get to this word, because this one is a bit lengthy, let me just finish with the rest of the prophetic word and then we'll get back to it. This one is a very important one as well for many of you who have children that are going to private schools. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord said, English medium schools. He said, English medium schools. Then he just said one word, atrocities. Hallelujah. Amen. An atrocity is an extremely cruel act, typically one involving physical violence or injury. The minute the Lord said this word, for some reason, I thought about what recently happened with the youth in Chicago that went viral on social media. Mm -hmm. And apparently it was planned on TikTok. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And suddenly hell just broke loose with young people uh, in Chicago. Many people got hurt. I don't know if there were any fa uh, fatalities, but I know a lot of people got hurt. We need to understand when the Lord said, pray against gangs, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The Lord has given us an instruction to pray against gangs. And I must say, I'm also guilty of this one. I don't think I've prayed enough against gangs. This is a prayer we need to take very, very seriously to cancel and to nullify any wicked plans of the enemy against children in schools. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And whatever initiations he's doing, the Lord was showing me that a lot of witchcraft initiations are being done in English medium schools. A lot of things are being, the enemy is literally initiating children in so many things. And now it's a corporate initiation. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. To cause them to become destructive in this season. So we need to pray, Amen. hallelujah, Amen. against this. And also listen to the Lord concerning your child Amen. in this season. Amen. Whatever instruction God is giving you concerning your child, take that instruction very, very seriously and do it. Amen. It is crunch time. We are no longer moving towards mm -hmm. manifestation. We are at manifestation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just finish the word. And then on the fifth, he said, roar, roar, as in like a lion roaring, right? Amen. And then he said, dunamis, power, power, east wind, east wind, blow, east wind, blow. And then he said, fallacies fall, Amen. wind of power, wind of change, my wind, my wind. The same wind that is coming to empower those that are aligned with God is the same wind that is coming to tear down anything that has been built outside the will of God. Amen. That is why I said this fire comes to bring order. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And for some, they are going to accuse the fire of bringing disorder because it's coming to rearrange things. Amen. That's why the Lord said, many will say the church is a mess. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Lord is saying it is not. But now I'm bringing my order. So when I bring my order, I don't build on top of this order. I have to tear down because I have to start with my foundation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why he's also tearing down all services. Hallelujah. Amen. Every ministry has to go through a tearing and a rebuilding Amen. in this season. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That God may bring you forth according to his ways Amen. to teach you what it truly means to be an usher. Hallelujah. Amen. Not what you have been seeing happening, but the conviction you are getting from the teachings of the Spirit, and you get to understand how crucial your ministry is. Amen. Because there are certain ministries we take for granted in the house of the Lord simply because we lack knowledge concerning those ministries. Amen. And the reason why the enemy has been able to infiltrate the church 
is precisely because we don't know our true assignments in the different ministries that we are a part of in the church. So there are so many gaps that have been left for the enemy to come in and to influence the church according to his ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We ought to learn how to pray. Amen. We ought to learn how to serve Amen. God his way. Yes. Amen. I mean, if you're going to serve me, you have to know how I want to be served. Yes. Amen. So we can't serve God without knowing how he wants to be served. Otherwise, we are not serving him. We are serving our own agenda and our Amen. own idea. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. There is another that we are serving who is not him. As long as it's not his spirit that is guiding and leading what we do, we are serving another. Amen. So Holy Spirit comes to bring back God's order. The same spirit can be a blessing, mm -hmm. but the same spirit can come to slay. Yes. The same spirit comes to rebuke. The same spirit comes with a rod Amen. to chastise Amen. those that are loved by the Father, to align with the ways of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. The same spirit. That's why it's fine. Mulo, mo hawo ko asha obon na her si mo wa uzidi ra. Amen. Kusubaro wa asha. Amen. Haru ko na uli zidi zidi hela korela ko. That's why ko tu zidi zidi. Korela ko mulo ka uso. Hawo ko kumasin te mulo. Wa abon na lo mulo ko kumi. Hallelujah. Amen. Wa ko lebe na video ya ni tan 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 tan. Gidi. O ta abon na ni ni ko kumi zaki mulo. Because if it were up to me, I wouldn't have done that video. Molono Kurumeza, get it done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's coming to align you. Yes. In the season. Hazuka. Ravesaria Pataria Mush. The Lord continues to say fentanyl. Fentanyl. Fentanyl is a drug. Very, very dangerous drug. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord said the enemy has infiltrated this drug in this nation. Hallelujah. Amen. Those of you that have internet, I trust that majority of you have internet. You can go on YouTube to check what this drug does. It literally turns people for lack of a better word, into what looks like zombies. For lack of a better word. We need to pray against these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to pray. Amen. The devil will not have this nation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He will not. He will not. Why? Because you are going to wake up from your slumber. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to wake up and you are going to do what you are supposed to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to grow up. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to pray differently. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are no longer going to be praying for 5,000 pula. Amen. For 500, for money, for a man, for a woman. Amen. Because you know those things are already taken care of Amen. as long as you are within the will of God. It's just a matter of the Father's appointed time. Amen. You are going to pray for souls. Amen. You are going to pray for the soul of your nation. You are going to pray for the soul of the United States of America. You are going to pray for the souls of the young people that the enemy was to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. You are going to pray for your family members. Amen. You are going to pray for witches. Amen. Those that you know and those that you don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to pray for rapists to repent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For those the enemy is using to kill people randomly, to repent. Amen. For their hearts to be melted. Amen. For them to return to being human Amen. once again. Amen. Demons are running rampant. Why? Because there no, is no one to pray. 
There's no one to pray. Some of you may be saying, well, we are praying. What are you praying for? Because if what you are praying for is not in line with what the Father expects you to be praying for, you are not praying. Mm -hmm. Heaven is not listening, but Satan is. Once we start to pray according to the heart of the Father, we will start to see revival. Mm -hmm. We will start to see children turning, fathers turning back to the children and children turning back to fathers. God is looking for submitted hearts Amen. to help save humanity. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I go back to the word concerning Hiroshima. Meresua kamia labasu yareto usuba ekeliatara asariyami. Last year, I believe beginning of last year and towards the end of 2021, the Lord started speaking and giving word about the Trojan horse. And that word led us to uh, Pearl Harbor, the surprise attack that the Japanese launched on uh, the island. Was it, what island was that? It was on Honolulu. Yes, the island that is occupied by the American Navy. Uh, there was a surprise uh, attack. And I believe 2,300 were said to, that's, that is said to be the number of uh, Americans that died in that island con concerning Pearl Harbor uh, during that surprise attack. Now, just a few, was it, was it two weeks ago or a week ago, the Lord told me to go and revisit 9-11. And then he started to talk to me about ground zero all over the world. I think I even spoke about it concerning the similarities between um, the word over the twin towers that we have. Yeah. We call them eye towers in, in Botswana. CBD. The word that God had given me concerning CBD to say that we need to pray against what the enemy has planned there. And for those that work there to always be prayerful, to know what the Spirit is saying to them on a daily basis because no one knows mm -hmm. the hour mm -hmm. the enemy is planning to strike. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the one thing we need to understand about 9-11 is that that was a sacrifice that was being made on an altar because that ground is an altar. Mm -hmm. It's a financial altar. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And because when you are erecting an altar for Satan, you have to sacrifice human blood. That is why you saw what happened. Human blood was sacrificed. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then immediately after the collapse, they never rebuilt those towers. What did they do? They just used it as a memorial for what happened. That's an excuse of calling that an altar for Satan. And a bull was put there to show that now the God that we are serving on this financial altar is Baal. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's why they call it the bull market. Yes. That is the system we've been under. It's a bull market. And now it's coming into the fullness of its face. Or it was coming into the fullness of its face, which is basically to give you what? The mark of the beast. What do you call a bull? It's a beast. Hallelujah. Amen. So eventually the beast wants you to what? To imprint yourself with it. The same way that those that have chosen Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible lets us know that we are marked on our foreheads. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And his name is written on our hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The same thing Satan does. You take the mark of the beast on your forehead or on your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why there are two systems, two kingdoms in this world that you can serve. 
No one, no man is just living and they are not saving any kingdom. You are by default saving the kingdom of darkness if you are not intentionally saving the kingdom of light. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God took me back to 9-11, I don't know how through the research I was doing, he just kept leading me from one person to another mm -hmm. until I arrived uh, at the man who was president during the time of Hiroshima bombing. And that was Harry S. Truman, the man that took from... Uh, Roosevelt, hallelujah, Franklin Roosevelt, the man that took from him because I believe he died eight months after coming into his third term as president. I believe he served third, uh, three terms, if I'm not mistaken. And on his third term, eight months in, is it eight, eight months or 80 days into it, I believe it was maybe 80 days into it, he passed away and then this man had to assume position as commander in chief. Now, the Lord drew me to so many things concerning this because they want to repeat history, but in a different light in this time around and at a larger scale than what we saw during World War II because all of these things were happening in World War II. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what is Hiroshima? For those of you that don't know, uh, Hiroshima, first of all, is a city in Japan. This city was bombed with a nuclear bomb. These were the first to be made. Two nuclear bombs that were made in the United States of America. Both of them landed in the country or the nation of Japan. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Hiroshima on the 6th, that's when the first bomb was dropped in the city Hiroshima, killing more than 70,000 innocent citizens. Hallelujah. Amen. And then on the 9th, three days later of August 1945, the second bomb landed in Nagasaki. That's another city in Japan, killing, I believe, more than 40,000 individuals. Some say in total, 200,000 people died as a result of those nuclear bombs. Now, how did America come to that place where it made these bombs? And for what reason were these bombs made to begin with? So I'm just going to read this out for you and I'm going to then explain why God is taking us through this particular uh, route today. Uh, interestingly enough, this is how the bombs came about in August 1939. Einstein, remember there was a word God gave concerning Einstein. When after God compiled this, he said, go back to the word I gave you concerning Einstein. And when I went back to the word, it was literally, literally so precise what the Lord said. Because remember when God prophesies or when God gives word, he gives it with full knowledge and understanding of everything that has transpired. Mm -hmm. That word comes as judgment. So for us, the word may be mysterious, but to God it is not because he knows the fullness of the picture. But if you continue to seek him, you get to understand because he continues to give you more puzzles to more pieces for the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And then you get to have an understanding of why he said what he said when he said it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So he said, uh, I'm just going to read this out for you. So in 1939, Einstein wrote to the U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt to warn him that the Nazis uh, in Germany were working on a new powerful weapon, an atomic bomb. And then his fellow physicist, Leo Zillard, uh, urged Einstein to send the letter and helped him in drafting of the letter. In July 1940, the U.S. Army Intelligent, Intelligence Office denied Einstein the security. That means that the president basically listened to Einstein's warning mm -hmm. and then gave the go-ahead for 
the army and the secret intelligence uh, agency to start this operation of, uh, they called it Manhattan Operation, where they were now working on these nuclear atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thinking that Germany is also making their own. So, so they say, this is was the reason why they were doing it, because they thought, well, if Germany is making uh, nuclear bombs, then we better be ready with nuclear bombs as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So then this is then what happened. So once they were given clearance, uh, we are being told that then Einstein was denied access to actually be part of the scientists that were making these bombs. Hallelujah. Amen. And then it goes on to say, August 6, 1945, now that means that the bomb was done, the bombs were made, two of them were made. And then this man died. I have to remind you of that. Roosevelt died before the bombs were released. Hallelujah. Amen. So immediately after he died, this new man, uh, what's his name? Harry S. Truman, who then became president after Roosevelt. He was the prime minister. Sorry, he was not the prime minister. He was the right. vice president. And when I checked him out, this man had, the way he became prime minister, at, why do I keep on saying prime minister? Vice, vice president and eventually the president of the United States of America was just, I don't want to say luck, but you can tell that the enemy knew exactly what he was doing. So the man literally grew up uh, from humble beginnings and he had nothing his wife was from a better off family and then he at one point he went to war and then that's where he met this other guy who was connected and then this other guy who was connected decided at one point to call him and say yo i want to make you senator are you gay and then who would refuse right mm -hmm. so he was made senator and obviously this other guy was uh, calling the shots from behind. He was a puppet, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. And then after he was senator, yes. then before you know it, now he's what? Vice president. Mm -hmm. And apparently he claims he never got to really spend time with Roosevelt because Roosevelt didn't even want to uh, team up with him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So isn't it interesting that then Roosevelt just died right on time for these bombs to be given the go-ahead mm -hmm. to be signed off by a president mm -hmm. to be taken to japan and to bomb japan innocent people and yet when the bombs were being made the idea behind the bombs being made was to what to make sure that they protect themselves against the possibility that Germany was making nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. So how do we move from Germany being the reason why we're making these bombs to now having the bombs being dropped in Japan and killing not even the army, but killing civilians? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What was really happening in that time? And why was this happening? So upon this happening, this is what is quoted to have been said by Einstein, who was the master mind behind the idea of the making of these nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he just said, war is me. And then he said, had I known that the Germans would not succeed in developing an atomic bomb, I would have, I would have done nothing. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, my question was, did Einstein really regret what he did? Or was this bad guy, bad cop, good cop kind of thing? Here's a little background on Einstein. Einstein was born in Germany, so he was German. Why? Right? Yes. Warning the U.S. about Germans. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. 
And at this point, he was a citizen of the United States of America. Amen. So Einstein is born in Germany, but moved to Switzerland, another interesting place, right? Amen. In 1895. And that's where he lived majority of his life. That's where he did his schooling. He got his PhD and everything else before he moved to the United States of America. Amen. And then he acquired a Swiss citizenship which he kept for the rest of his life. In 1933, while he was visiting the U.S., why did he decide to visit the U.S. in 1933? After completing the fullness of his theory, which he developed in Switzerland mm -hmm. his entire life. So he decides to go to the U.S. at the same time when Adolf Hitler was coming into power in Germany. Now, this is something that I put in brackets. It seemingly looks like all cards were what? We're now moving into place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Suddenly, another one from Germany, being Adolf, the one that we, we've done, the history of Adolf and what happened with him, right? Yes. Now, we see that the same time that this guy was being raised by the devil, Hitler, we see another scientist who is given blueprints about how to make nuclear bombs. Hallelujah. Amen. But obviously when you are taught, you know, about his theory and whatnot in physics, they don't tell you about the fact that uh, his, his focus really was how can I make things go kaboom, right? So we just know that he, you know, he's cool. It's Einstein. So all cards were moving into place, right? Amen. Uh, Hitler was now in power. Einstein was done with his, with his uh, training in Switzerland. And now he was moving to the place where action takes place, the United States of America. Amen. It is said that when Einstein ob uh, objected, it is said that he objected to the policies of Hitler, in other words, uh, that's why he's coming up with ways to come up with nuclear bombs because he doesn't like this whole violence thing. That's why we're coming up with bombs. I don't know. Maybe. And then he then settled in the U.S. and became an American citizen. He was, was a citizen of Germany and then he went to Switzerland. He had favor. Ne? Mm -hmm. Then he went to Switzerland. He became a citizen of Switzerland. His entire life, they said, anytime you want to come by, just swing by anytime you want. Mm -hmm. You are one of us. And then he goes to America. Immediately he gets there. You are one of us. Receive your green card. Mm -hmm. Right? It's Einstein. Mm -hmm. Who would say no to Einstein? Amen. Right? Amen. So he becomes a citizen of the United States of America in 1940. On the eve of World War II, he endorsed a letter. So the same night they launched World War II is the same night he sends the letter to President Franklin Roosevelt, alerting him to the potential that Germany is working on nuclear weapons and recommending the U.S. begin a similar research. That was Einstein's input during World War II, right? Amen. He basically advised the president. This is why the Lord, if you remember, the Lord has always been saying to us, it is very vital to know who is advising your king. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who is the counselor or who are the counselors? of your king as a nation. Amen. It is very, very vital because the mind and the motive and the vision of his counselors or the ones that have called his counsel, the ones that have sent his counselors to counsel him is the one that is being played out. And if that one play or fails to play ball 
and he's not protected by the Lord, they simply remove him out of power or when they're done with him, they simply remove him through assassination or by simply just removing him. One way or another, he will move. That's the thing about the enemy. He doesn't tell you that you are not safe simply because you are serving him. Because once he's done with you, he will basically expire you and move in another who will serve the next phase of the mission. So true men, this whole time he was moving up the ranks, Satan knew mm -hmm. what he's going to use the men for yes. when he gets in power. Amen. The man was already intimidated. He knew he had no business being a president, let alone a vice president. So whatever he was told, he was doing it. You can imagine being in a boardroom with the commander of the armies and you have the ministers, you have senators, you have all these people who've been in politics their entire life. We know foreign relations. We understand these things. Listen to us. What are they looking for? They're just looking for your signature to push their own agenda. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Roosevelt, out of the blue, coincidentally just dies mm -hmm. right on time for true men to come into power who knew nothing about being president and just was looking to be approved by the rest of the team and they tell him son for the annihilation of the people of Japan sign we are going to test just how powerful these nuclear bombs are in Japan sign because we have another reason why we chose Japan to test these what were they doing they were launching Satan was launching and introducing the world to nuclear weapons with the way that he ended, because that was the ending of World War II. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The end of one thing is the introduction of another. I was just telling you about the phase that we just came out of. Mm -hmm. And the way God ended it was with what? It literally, the last word that is spoken when I was baptizing them is receive baptism of holy fire. So the last sentence that was ushering us out of a season was also ushering us into a season. Of what? Of baptism in God's fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is reminding us and was making us understand when World War II ended, it was the end of one thing and an introduction of the face that is going to be concerning world, world war three which is phase three of the war the world wars they ended with an introduction of nuclear hallelujah Amen. are we following this Amen. and this and the people of japan were collateral to them yes. those precious lives were simply collateral that's what you do. You need to understand. The devil doesn't care for you. He doesn't care about you one bit. And his agents have sold their soul. That means they don't feel a thing where you are concerned. So how would you abuara and an ipakan? Do everything I tell you to do. I am the only one who knows where you will be safe. Amen. I am the only one who knows what it takes for your body to not be susceptible to the effects of nuclear bombs. Amen. What did God say? He said, new, he said, missiles will kiss in the air. What are they made of? Nuclear. Mm -hmm. These are nuclear weapons. He said they will kiss in the air. When they kiss in the air, what happens? The residues come back way. On earth. Mm -hmm. These are hazardous things mm -hmm. that kill you slowly but surely. Not even slowly. When I say slowly, mm -hmm. the way that if a bomb was to come, it will just dismantle your body mm -hmm. right there. But if they kiss in the air, that is why he's been giving all these instructions about what you, you should eat or religious. Are you listening? Amen. God is making your body 
immune yes. to the toxins yes. that are coming to the egg. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's all learn how to dig it. We try to learn to dig it. Hello, how can we get one? Kiss on your nose. Sing in your nose. Your nose. Hello. Sing to your mouth. Your home. Who is the hell you are? Hallelujah. These toxins are the worst type. They cause the worst types of cancers. Hallelujah. Once you inhale, we don't even know the fullness of the effect of inhaling such things. But the Lord says, I want to make you immune. There was a time he said, receive. He said what? He said nuclear. There's, a, there's the way that he said it. They will look for the word and we will share it with you. But he was basically saying, receive immunity to the effects of nuclear. Amen. But when God says receive immunity, I receive over kimonat. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You saying I receive is you saying I receive your instructions on how I become. Amen. It's you saying yes to the commander of the heavens armies because you know when a commander speaks, a soldier just follows. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But this particular commander, everything he instructs you is for your own good. Amen. In 2016, when God began to show me things to come, one of the first things I kept seeing over and over again were explosions in the air. And I even forgot about that word. I remember the, there is one particular dream I had where I saw everyone could see that this is definitely something explosive in the air. And people were running helter-skelter. We didn't know where it was going to land. And then once it landed, I just remember asking, what, what was it? Was it a bomb? Was it a bomb? Where did the bomb uh, land? Where did the bomb land? And then a voice just said to me, it's not a bomb, it's a missile. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are explosions that God has planned for this hour that he's going to do himself also in certain territories in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Beautiful explosions of his power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is bringing revival like you have never seen before. But guess what is also going to propel us to partner with him to allow such an explosion? Mm -hmm. Desperation. Amen. Conan. Such a crucial word. He said, whatever that will awaken you, those that will not be in the Lord, what will bring them is desperation. Because as long as they are comfortable, they will not come to the Lord. That one is very clear. They've made it very, very clear. They will not come. Their hearts have been made stony. Nothing will move them at this point in time. Satan has made humanity so comfortable so that he can slay them in their comfort. Threatening them for the day of slaughter. Fattening you for the day of slaughter. To make sure that there is no prayer life. You have zero prayer life. There is no prayer that can come out. With the type of diet that we are so loyal to, there is no prayer. And without prayer, there is no enlightenment. There is no understanding of what is happening. And you are taken by surprise by the enemy. But the Lord says, it's fine. 
You 300, come. Mm -hmm. Be the pioneers of the new thing. I don't need a, God doesn't need many to go to battle. Satan again, I'm going to let my treaty treat to go to battle. Amen. God only has a handful. He just needs a handful, if not one man, but a handful of men and women who have said, yes, Lord, to you. Amen. Whether you deliver us or not, we are saying yes to you. Whether you bring to pass what we are believing you for or not, we say yes to you. Amen. We are not enticed by things. We don't need for you to give us incentives for us to know that you are God Amen. and for us to give you your place in our lives. Amen. We are your children. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever you say we do, those are the 300. Even when he brings that which is meant to quench your thirst, as part of the 300, you don't go to sleep. Some of you, mudimu ola tetsisimwenya. That's not even 1% of what he has in store for you. But some of you, it shows your true colors. You leave. I've made it. I finally got what I wanted from the Lord. But when they got to the river, when God finally picked the, the last and the final people that he was taking to battle, Give an enemy big. Those that drank the water, Basa Kuba, Bali Bile Mobache, Abaizor were at war. Right now, God is saying, I'm releasing blessings, but don't, don't forget, we are at war. The enemy has his own agenda that he's rolling out, that is warring against humanity. So as I shower you with what I'm giving you to quench your thirst in this time, don't lose sight of what is happening. Let not my blessings become a curse to you. Amen. 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 That's your prayer. He said, don't, don't forget what time it is. I'm simply equipping you, giving you fuel for the season. Hallelujah. transition. This is manna. Hallelujah. It's what? It's manna. Even this, remember when they left Egypt, God instructed them to get silver and gold from the Egyptians on their way out. God had his tabernacle in mind for that silver and gold because their inheritance was in the promised land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's going to be feeding them with divine food. Manna from heaven. Amen. Food for angels. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to be seeing supernatural things in the season. You will know God. Angels will eat with you. Angels will come and give you that food. Hallelujah. Your eyes will be open to other realities that you didn't know existed. He says, worry not about what you will eat, what you will wear, where you will sleep. I'm your father. But focus on your assignment. Amen. For when you do that, surely you and your own shall live. Hallelujah. Amen. And you will enter the promised land. Amen. I've seen hints of the promised land. Hallelujah. Amen. It is indeed glorious. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So this word is to remind you of everything the Lord said we should eat and drink. In this season. Mm -hmm. The plants he said we should plant. Amen. In our homes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. These things are vital. To equip your suit. To be able to resist. Anything that will come. That is foreign to it. In the air. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then amongst those things. He said I should remind you of this. Uh, herb called mulin. 
It's M U double L E I N. Hallelujah. Amen. And then as we were in prayer, he also said demand. And then he said T. Immediately when he said that, I knew he was saying the time for herbs as medicine is now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord says, if we are not preparing now, we will never be ready. Amen. This is the last word I want to end this broadcast with today. Oh yes, I was going to share with you what the Lord said concerning Einstein. I have so many books before me. Goodness gracious. And I don't even have light. But the Spirit reminds me anyway. So I thank Him for that. So you heard of the blunders of Einstein, right? Yes. Another interesting fact about him that I almost forgot to share with you is remember what the Lord said, always know and understand what your leader or your mentor believes in because that is very important. It also helps you to understand in what direction they are moving. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So Einstein was not a believer in Jesus Christ. He was a believer in the God of Spinoza. So Spinoza, I guess he was a scientist that all scientists look up to. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The same God that Einstein believed, believes in is the same God that Elon Musk believes in. Yes. Amen. Spinoza's God. Amen. So do the math concerning this hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. I won't say anything else. Amen. So concerning Einstein... This is what the Lord had said on the 15th of June, 2021. He said, Einstein, the careless mistakes you made shall be rectified in this time. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't have careless mistakes. He wrote a letter. The Germans are working on nuclear bombs. Hitler is not a nuclear bomb. Hitler is not a nuclear bomb. But he is not a nuclear bomb. And then he gave the blueprints to other enemies, to humanity. And then they made them and then they destroyed humanity with them. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is why it's very important to know and understand that your gift is either serving the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. Amen. This man was for sure given a gift by God as a scientist. Mm -hmm. He was smart. Hallelujah. Amen. But because he didn't believe in God, he was what? He was directed and his skills and his gift was honed by what? The God of Spinoza. Whatever that God believes in, that God believed in is these are the results. Because anything that is not God, any other God is basically pointing to the devil. And the devil has only Three agendas to kill, steal, and destroy. And we see the results of what? Destruction and death. Hallelujah. Amen. So it has who written all over it? The devil. Yes. Is the devil. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The funny thing as well is that when you read about the belief system, you will never see destruction or whatever. No. It always sounds so harmonious, so so nice. But as long as it doesn't have Jesus, it is a fake light. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not the real light. Mm -hmm. It is deception. Yes. And here's the, the interesting part again. Into that, there, there are a lot of interesting things. Everything is interesting today. The name of Spinoza is Baruch. Remember, God has been saying Baruch a lot. Yes. His first name is Baruch. I found that very interesting as well. So I'm going to be looking into him as well to see why they all believe in him beyond the obvious. So this is one of the quotes of Elon. He said, strive for greater collective enlightenment. Strive for greater collective enlightenment. That sounds like one world order to me, one world religion to me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because there's no other enlightenment apart from that Jesus is the light yes. of the world. Amen. And that's not a collective mm -hmm. 
enlightenment. We know that. Mm -hmm. So automatically, it just removes us out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is what the Lord had said concerning Einstein. He said, Einstein, the careless mistakes you made shall be rectified in this time. A complete shift in science. Science will glorify me. Me in this time. I remove all the rubbish. Every theory of science I will use to marvel. I will use science to marvel at my creation. Amen. The truth about my creation. In other words, we are going to be seeing the spirit of God not only moving in the church, but moving throughout the earth, hovering the fullness of the earth once again wow. to bring forth a true alignment so that those scientists that have laid it in their hearts to serve the true meaning of science, which is to what? To bring mankind to what? To the acknowledgement and the full knowledge and understanding of what they have, they have observed concerning God's creation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That is what science is supposed to be. It's supposed to point men to God Amen. to say, look at how marvelous wow. are the works of God. Wow. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not that we hate science. The same way that we've, we've spoken about medicine to say that, yes, doctors are needed. Mm -hmm. Because God did say what lives for medicine. But they need to be true doctors. Yes. That bring healing, not side effects. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And only the spirit of truth carries purity. Amen. And in purity, there are no side effects. Amen. If there's something wrong with you, whatever you are given just deals with what is wrong and that's where it ends. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What am I leaving behind? Yes. So, May. May is time to occupy our tent. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Not maybe. Not if God willing, He's willing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God, let me just tell you now. God is willing. Amen. If I may know who are not willing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is more than 28. Return it or be remote and take your own. Amen. This is what he said. Hallelujah. Yahweh Banna had. Yahweh Hakula had. Hallelujah. He said, The storm approaches. Put on the whole armor. Hallelujah. Amen. Put on the armor, shields up. What is your shield? Your shield is faith. Mm -hmm. Remember, you are part of the 300. Amen. You are at the forefront. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So your shield is faith. Yes. Listen, in this season, you will not be able to follow instructions if you don't have faith. Amen. Because when you don't have faith, logic will give you what the plans that you have. Logic will be the one to plan for you and to think for you and all things concerning you, logic will take over and logic will lead you straight into the hands of the enemy in this season. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, swords out. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Know your word. There are two visions I had, but I will not share them now because of time. I will try by all means to share them during the course of the week. Just those two. They are very vital. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, swords out. Come, come. They come out. Who? The enemy. I grew up when holding coronation, me holding what to what. Hagir. Yes. Mudimu ni bolele le zorba. Libo ne hasim hasim mudimu hala le bolele. Libo ne ba ho bolele le zorba. Where they stand, where you are concerned, mm -hmm. they've made that stand very clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That the earth needs to be what it needs to be cleansed mm -hmm. of all the filth. That means you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's too crowded. Hallelujah. He said, they come. They come out. Mm -hmm. Hear me. You will see them for their true colors. What did he say about the month of May? He said, it's also a month of what? True colors. Yes. What does the fire do? The fire forces something to come out. Yes. Does it not? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I really feel that why, why they, why they are bad. He's setting them ablaze. 
so that they will jump forth and show their true colors. What happened to Paul when he, he uh, got to Malta? When they were by the fireplace? What happened? He got bitten by what? A snake. A snake. Then what did he do? No, the snake actually came out of the, of the fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. The whole time they didn't know, before there was a fire, they didn't know there a snake was hiding there. Yes. Amen. Even in the house of God, snakes will come forth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Eh? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He said, they come out. Fear not. Hallelujah. Amen. Fear not. Vicious. They come vicious. Hallelujah. Amen. But he says, fear not. Oscar Wealth transfer. Wealth transfer. I say, Rahabana Mushaka. Amen. Because of precisely because of what God is going to be doing, shifting things around, put on a and hallelujah. Amen. This this thing of always thinking, you know, if it's God's move, we are just going to sing kumbaya and everyone will be, you know, we are everyone loving on one another. That would be ideal. But that's not what is going to be happening. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Kake bona le le go bona la jamu. Me lang go tla ke. Se se botlhoka. That's why it is the month of is the month of what pay. The month the month of the mouth. Amen. Of his word, his word coming forth. Okay. Amen. Eh, that's why nake sa bona. Me ene la mo. Hallelujah. Amen. He said they come out vicious. Then he said, what? Tents go up. It's an instruction. He said, tents go up. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And then he said, tents go up. The storm approaches immediately. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. What do you think is happening? Hallelujah. When I know and he said what convert now yes. hallelujah yes. convert now mm -hmm. decision it's for you. Hallelujah. He said, tents go up. Hallelujah. Amen. The storm approaches immediately. You don't want to wait for the storm. Or you don't want to wait for the storm. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. He goes on to say, they come, they have reinforced from all corners. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But fear not. I like Amen. it. Mm. And they come vicious, but fear not. Mm. And then he says, they've reinforced. That means what we have seen before is nothing compared to what they've done now. Amen. That's why they're so confident. Babu Ahela, plain blank. Babu Ahela, speaking for we're coming for you. Holy, holy, soft, there we get the because they think it's a done deal until somebody comes and rescues you and then this is what we are seeing now hallelujah Amen. he says fear not yes. this is the third phase Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my God. Mm. It's a third phase of Armageddon. Mm. First phase in LA, World War I. Do you see it now? Mm -hmm. Second phase, World War II. So we are in what? Third phase of Armageddon. Because there are four faces. I believe that the, that's why he said, this is my time as God to fulfill. Because God has what? Three. Because God is in what? He's in three, right? Yes. But the kingdom of darkness, because it's not God, it needs the fullness of what? Of the horns of the earth. Because he's what? The prince of what? The prince of the air. He only rules here. In the physical world. Mm. So he has to abide by what? By the completion of the earth. Mm. Which is in four. That's why it's four kingdoms that need to fall. Yes. That's why he cannot put mm. this thing into fruition now. Because it is in its third phase. Yes. And he cannot skip third phase. Remember that even when we were talking about this the other day. I said it's like the third phase is not accounted for. Why? Because he wanted to skip do you see it now? Yes. 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 My spirit is just excited. I don't know why I'm as excited. The third face is about Armageddon. <laughs> but my spirit is excited. Do you know that? Once the spirit of God comes upon you, he, and he wants to advance. Mm -hmm. He wants to confront. That's why I'm what is AI to my emotional. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Naki Bomulo. Who told the Rekir? Bonuma. Katibo Jehu. Jehu was a man who was baptized. The minute that oil hit him, fire came upon him. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. And he had to get things done. Remember what I said? When the, the fire of God hits you, you move. Yes. You get things done. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. He said they have reinforced from all corners. This is the third phase, the most fierce phase. Mm -hmm. Hear me. This war is the first one that leads to Armageddon. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. And then he said, be sober. Hallelujah. Amen. Be what? Sober. sober. How are you sober as a child of God? Is when you know what the Spirit is doing and saying. Yes. That's how you are sober. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you are in confusion, you are more or less drunk mm -hmm. with confusion. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So he says, be sober. You cannot survive this war without me. Amen. Yes. Let it Amen. No one will make it out of this without God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't even underestimate the enemy. That's the one mistake we make. God can give us the victory. And that is the key word, God. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The problem is re nyatsa modimo re setse re motsa ka mongana rona so when i say god reveal a hela gore gore la gore nothing is happening but if it's going to take god that means something big is happening amen hallelujah amen. if god has to come and fight for you and fight on your behalf amen. that means it is bigger than you yes. amen hallelujah amen. he said stay in me Hallelujah. Amen. Remember who you are. Ega sena go ya go ganella ka minisikete, go ganella ka fornication, go ganella ka dozedisisanyane. Your life is at stake. Yes. Hallelujah. Surely you can set those things aside. Go ngamela. Hallelujah. Set those things aside. Purge yourself of all manner of sin and come present yourself pure before your father and come under his wings of protection that you may live. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says my wings in the season are in the form of a tent. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember who you are. Do not be shaken. They are coming with their agenda. This was in 2020. Ne go se go bua with that agenda ne ba santse ba ba re tsosa ka covid. Modimo yena na setsa dila le agenda. Hallelujah. The agenda is what? The reset. Yes. Right? Yes. That's the agenda. Mm-hmm. In fact, they call it 2030 agenda. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. He said they come they are coming with their agenda. So am I. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Question is where will you be? Mm-hmm. He said casual Christians. These are not my words. He said casual Christians shall become casualties. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Take that word very seriously. He said hear me, pray for your brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Days of fulfillment. Do not forget. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just going to read everything he said. Yeah, can make it like it will balance it. Hallelujah. Amen. He said do not forget it's my money for my souls. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, to every man according to how the spirit interprets mm. he said do not forget it's my money for my souls he said troops march forth troops march forth now i can barely see is there anything i can use to shed light on this i'm almost done beloved don't worry i know today i've kept you and kept you in the dark but you are receiving light hallelujah amen you are receiving light yes these things are now understand that this month we are in is the unfolding of all of these things hallelujah amen amen hallelujah amen i'm going to yes this side i can see a little bit so he says hear me do not Yes, I was here. He said troops march forth. He said troops march forth. Hallelujah. Amen. For your commander is here. Are you listening? Amen. So he considers you a what? A soldier. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said march forth. For your commander is here now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said I go before you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Take this one instruction, do not break ranks. Amen. Take this word very seriously. Amen. If God has placed you here to be under his tent in truth contender ministries, le ha o ka ngala wa nga diswa ke mang ka re molota bo bo bona dinoga ditswa go tlhakatlhakana gore. Understand No man is perfect. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. None of us are perfect. So God is coming to save us from ourselves Amen. and from the deceiver that had been deceiving us this whole time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's not a season to judge each other. It's not a season to point fingers hongala. How ngala? Wa right into the hands of the enemy. Mm-hmm. If God rebukes you, take it like a child and move on. And stay in his camp because the enemy is going to be looking to offend as many as possible to come out of protection. 
to come out of the hedge of protection. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord says, do not break ranks. Wherever God has placed you, stay put. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, do not break ranks. Hear me, do not break ranks. And you, when you talk about breaking of ranks and you talk about troops, you are talking about, uh, uh, you are talking about what? Soldiers. This is what? Military business. Hallelujah. Amen. So God considers you now ready for battle. He wants you to understand it's a season of battle. That's why he's speaking in this kind of language. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, and you shall be what? You shall have victory all the time. Amen. Not sometimes. Amen. All the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, see my wall. See my wall. And then he said, Coca-Cola, down you go. Hallelujah. Amen. 2021, I start my performance. Giants fall. And we've been seeing them falling yes. and falling and falling. He said, simultaneous move. Heavenly audit has been complete. Results are in. Mm. Many, many giant, giant brands I bring down, they continue to go down. Take a seat and learn from the king. Success minus corruption, very much possible. And I will show it through the faithful ones. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Sisi Nekahori fullness because sometimes it's, it's like people get confused. I used to get confused. I was like, God... We are winning, we are building production. What is happening? He said, it's fullness. All things are happening. Amen. It's that simple. It's fullness. Amen. But life continues, does it not? In other parts of the world. Yes. But it doesn't mean calamity is not happening in other places. It's not even the only place. It's the only place they make noise about. But it's not the only place. Hallelujah. Amen. Things are constantly happening. Banks are crashing, but God is saying what? Receive wealth. Are you listening? Amen. So you need to understand the workings of God. Mm -hmm. And I pray that he will bring you into speedy understanding of his ways. Amen. Amen. Because you need it in this season. You need to understand how God speaks and you need to understand how to interpret and to get full understanding of what he's communicating to you so that you can be able to best utilize that which he has given you in that time. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. So the one thing I want you to take away from this program that we've had today is one, there's a lot of serious things that are transpiring in our time. The great reset the enemy has long planned is now in motion. It's no longer coming, it's now in motion. Some pastors, sadly, are, are the ones that are being also used to push it. Whether it's the 15-minute cities, whether it's the, 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 the laundering or whatever the case may be, whether it's... And there's another vision that I had that I want to share with you. Some are moving in false, uh, not even false, corrupt anointing that God is also going to be exposing in this season. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God wants you to fully get to know him in this time. Mm. So the enemy used everything possible that points to God that man usually looks to, to determine whether God is there or not. He has used it, used it and exploited it to get us to be deceived and to stay in the place of defeat, defeat and bondage. Mm -hmm. But God is coming to expose all of those things. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. He was showing me a fake, a dark Holy Spirit move that has been going on and the list of expected candidates being used by the enemy to push this. To law in the gullible who don't have a personal relationship with God. with So very interesting times. That's why he said we're in a season of double deception. Mm -hmm. But the one thing you can never fake is the state of your heart. Amen. Never. Amen. You can fake miracles. 
You can even perform and make people feel goosebumps of satanic anointing. Mm. But you can't fake the state of your heart because spirit to spirit can tell the state of the heart. So majority of the time, if we are moving by the flesh and our hearts as well are sealed, we fail to see deception because we ourselves are not, we have not activated the part of us that is able to discern it. That's your heart. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So the, the more tender your heart becomes, the more you cannot be deceived. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because your heart, as tender as it gets, the more tender it gets, the more it will only respond to God. Mm -hmm. The God in the person. Yes. And if there's no God in the person, then your heart will not connect. Yes. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. No matter what they do, your heart will not connect yes. because there is no connection from your heart. Mm -hmm. But if your heart is sealed, anything you see, any show you see, you'll be sold out to that show. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. It's a very uh, busy month for me as we prepare for uh, this glorious fiery day. Hallelujah. Amen. Pentecost on the T. On the DOT. Yeah. The 28th. Le the, the, the calendar, the Greek calendar. Yeah, the heathens. Yeah, the heathens. Yeah, the heathens. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I'm believing God for you. Uh, are there any announcements? Just watch the page. Okay. For venue and registration details. Yes. So, if you want to help with the erection of the tent, you know what number to call. If you want to come, please make sure that you register on time for this one. For this one, make sure that you register on time. Karna Hotza, any last minute registrations hallelujah yeah. register on time yeah. it's crunch time yeah. hallelujah yeah. so when it's crunch time we are less here and we are more on the ground yeah. hallelujah yeah. so it's time for you to also make a shift you can see he's dimming the lights on it i mean you can see this is prophetic hallelujah yeah. is it not yeah. it's prophetic he's dimming the lights on coming to you in this manner mm. for now. I can give reset how reset that we are what imagine like it. And then you are working behind the scenes. And then after some time they why when I can be yes. So come come to the physical ground be touched by God. Receive the fire of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Receive a touch from God. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's no longer about just hearing the prophetic word, but it's about action on what to do with that which you've been given. To stay alive. Yeah. Literally. Hallelujah. Yeah. God bless you. I don't believe I'm leaving anything behind. Just one. One last thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, did I write it here? There's a scripture. Kindly look, look for it for me if I can't find it here. Because I have so many books. It's First Chronicles. So hopefully I'll find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my life. So, when God was talking to me about this fire, He reminded me that throughout my journey with Him, and even at the very beginning of my journey with Him, the first time the Holy Spirit took me over completely, uh, he manifested as a lion. And ever since then, 
that's pretty much how how we operate hallelujah but he did make me understand that he's coming through his people we are going to war as a pack of lions against a pack of lions in the dark kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know that the Bible says that the enemy roars, uh, comes like a roaring lion, seeking whom to devour. Hallelujah. Amen. So, he, I really want to read this for you. I had written it at the top of something. Now I can't find it. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's about the, the Gadites in First Chronicles. Is it First Chronicles chapter? Does anyone know it is? In First Chronicles, where the Bible talks about the Gadites and it describes them. The Bible describes that their faces were like the, the face of a lion. And they were so swift. That means they were so quick, like gazelles. Mm -hmm. 